welcome everyone. Thank you for being here this evening. My name is Lauren Williams, and I'm Adult and Community Services Manager for the Columbia Public Library, which is part of the Daniel Boone Regional Library System. And we are here today for an introduction to investing in stocks. Tonight's presenter is Hannah Klatchko. She, is, um, uh, she has been doing these presentations for us for more than 10 years at the library and has made the transition from doing in-person programs to Zoom programs. We really appreciate her flexibility. Um, supporting lifelong learning and literacy are part of the library's mission. And so that means not only reading, uh, but that means financial literacy as well. So we're really pleased to have an experience in experienced investor with us to talk to us about investing in stocks. Um, Hannah is a member of a local investment club and a representative and volunteer um, of the Kansas City chapter of Better Investing. And like I said, she's been doing this for us for more than a decade. So I appreciate her sharing her expertise with us and I will turn things over to Hannah. Thank you. Now, let me see. Um, I'm just going to change the view and um... I'm going to stop the video a bit, and then I'm going to share screen, and then I'm going to click on this, and then I'm going to share this, and this is where I begin. Um, welcome all. Um, we have a marvelous uh, uh, program director at the library, and uh, she's been very busy coming in the evenings, uh, seeing that all of these programs are set up, and um, we're very grateful to her and the library for offering so many, such a diversity of, um, of uh, uh, ideas and programs. Uh, now, let's see. Uh -oh. I'm supposed to be able to move. It. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, uh, just so we don't have any distractions like cell phones in the background. Um, if you could turn off your cell phones and uh, other electronic gadgets, that would be very much appreciated. Now, th there's a lot to learn about investing, and I can't even begin to tell you about half. Today is just an introduction. Um, uh, but it is interesting. It's an interesting subject. My father used to, um, he thought it was uh, very interesting. He dealt with this stock exchange in depth. And he, I couldn't find as a child very interesting at all. But I have, once I've been introduced to um, a stock club and better investing, I found there's so much to learn and it can be very interesting. But before we continue, there is a disclaimer. Um, anything that's presented will be for educational purposes only. Nothing is intended to be a recommendation for you to purchase or sell. And I'll let you just look through that. And in a nutshell, the examples we use and this presentation are for educational purposes only. No investment recommendation is intended and mentioning is not an endorsement. And you need to use your own study and research uh, to and apply your own judgment as to whether you want to buy, sell or keep a stock. Uh, for uh, ask your tax consultant or accountant for serious tax questions regarding uh, stock selling and buying is recommended. Okay. You have been uh, sent a handout. There's a glossary of definitions, um, how to access value line from home and how to um, access Morningstar, um, who, which is a broker from home. And there are a lot of references for um, books and magazines that I have um, added to that glossary at the bottom. Um, okay, there will be question breaks. We'll discuss investing versus trading uh, or day trading more, and then investment basics. And that uh, you will be able to have uh, that written, that's all written down in your glossary. We'll talk about the what information you could look for and where to find it. And uh, the library has an enormous uh, range of things that you can learn from uh, in the books and magazines that they stock. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about stock clubs, uh, the better investing organization. And then if we have time, some 
personal experiences and mistakes. Uh, personal experiences that I'm, I made went before I knew nothing, and then mistakes that I made even when I had learned something. Okay, we'll start off with investing versus trading. Um, investing is guided by fundamental analysis, and by that we mean uh, there's a financial data and management uh, performance which is controlled. Uh, the management performance is controlled by people, and the uh, data is, is presented from the company. Uh, day trading is mostly guided by technical analysis, and Motley Fool often has something to say about everything in, in investing, and they have a list of 50 unfortunate truths about investing. And one is when somebody mentions charts, moving averages, head and shoulders patterns, or resistance patterns, just move away. And they also say what markets do from day to day is overwhelmingly driven by random chance. Ascribing explanations to short-term moves is like explaining lottery numbers. Now, learn before you leap. And this is what I didn't do in the beginning, but then I started reading Peter Lynch's book. I'll tell you about that later. But he has a saying that the natural born investor is a myth. And Ben Franklin, an investment in, investment in knowledge pays for the best interest. Okay, we'll start off with the ticker symbols. They're used in the exchange, stock exchange listing. A -E -N -E, AEE is the symbol for a Mary, Mary, Amarin corporation, excuse me, it's my Australian accent that tends to um, say things in a different way. Um, United Healthcare at UNH, uh, for which the university has, from which the university has insurance and Visa, I think all of you know about Visa. Uh, shares, there are two kinds of common shares or two kinds of shares that people refer to in when they're investing, the common shares outstanding and the preferred shares. You can buy each from a broker and they may be listed on the stock exchange. Um, and there are significant differences between the two. Uh, preferred shares are a form of debt for the for the company. The buyer, it lends money to the company. You have no voting rights and there are dividends and it's the size of the dividends that attracts a lot of people to purchase preferred shares. Um, and then there are variable conditions you need to read about what would happen to you if something, you know, under certain conditions. But for the sake of this uh, program, we're only going to talk about common shares outstanding, and they represent ownership in the company, and you do have voting rights. And sometimes the price of a share, or the when you talk about the cost of a share, they sometimes talk about price, or sometimes they refer to it as a quote. Now, size of the company can be measured in two ways, and they're very different. And the common way is market cap, and you've heard about market cap, uh, but um, a good way is to measure the sales and revenue. So measuring it by size, by sa sales and revenue is the current better investing standard. And um, if a company has less than a billion sales a year, it's considered a small size company. And if the sales are between 1 billion and 10 billion, it's considered a mid-size company. And greater than that, it's a large size. And just as a reminder, 1 billion equals 1,000 million in United States, that is. Now, size by market cap is different. It's the price multiplied by the number of shares. Uh, the same divisions are there, less than 1 billion. Less than 1 billion is called a small cap. And between 1 billion and 10 billion, it's called a mid cap. And greater than that is called a large cap. 
So to determine the size this way, you multiply the price, say it's 55, by the total shares, 100 million. And that comes to 5.5 billion. And that makes it a mid cap. Now, by measuring size by market capitalization, every day the price of the shares changes and every day the market cap price size changes also. But the if you judge the size by the sales or revenue, it's usually for the trailing 12 months or for the last year and it's more consistent. The basic fundamentals of the company are, there are the sales and the revenue that they start off. Think lemonade stand, <laughs> minus the expenses, you know, the cost of the lemonade and the cost of the glasses or cups that you're using. And that equals the pre-tax profit or PTP. And then, if it isn't, a, you probably wouldn't pay taxes on a lemonade stand, but if you're a big company, you have to pay taxes and you subtract the taxes from that and you get what's called the net earnings or the profit. Now you divide that by the number of the shares and that equals the earnings per share or EPS. Another way of showing it here's the sales the expenses are taken away, you're left with the pre-tax profit, take away the taxes, and you have the earnings. Earnings per share is the total earnings divided by the net income, divided by the number of shares. So the total earnings is an example, 6 million uh, in total earnings. Uh, and the common shares is 12 million, divide that, and that's 50 cents. That's the earnings per share, but that particular stock is 50 cents. So for each share, that no matter what the cost is, 50 cents of that is from the earnings. Now the PE ratio is a very popular number to use. You take the stock price and divide it by the earnings per share. And here's an example. The price of the stock is $80. Earnings per share is $4. For each share, you get $4 of earnings. So the PE is 20. And it's saying that you're, you are paying $20 for each one dollar of earnings. It's like a unit price of a stock. Now, PEs vary within, uh, well, vary from one industry to another. Um, usually the industries have very common you you would make a comparison of PEs within the industry uh, because in companies are divided into different sectors and the sectors are divided into different industries. Now, as an example here, one sector might be financial services and there may be industries. One industry could be credit services. An example would be Visa and MasterCard. And another industry within that sector might be um, asset management, and that would be uh, a bank or um, a holding company, perhaps. So when you compare PEs, you need to look at the same industry. And there is, for most industries, there is what we call a PE industry average. So you can use that kind of comparison. Just say you've got MasterCard, um, you look at the PEs and see how it compares with the PEs of the industry average of the credit services. Now, industries um, typically differ in PE ranges. 
um, the utility companies often have low PEs, tech companies have higher PEs. And if you have a company that has a very high PE, extremely high PE, PE might indicate it's in a speculation phase. And we'll talk more about that later. Now, if the current PE, meaning at this time, is less than the five-year average, it, there's a possibility that that might be one indication of a buying opportunity. Then there's debt that companies have. Uh, companies may gr grow money or get money in different ways, three different ways. They either can sell a lot and get a lot from their sales or revenue. They can sell stock. So they end up with more shares. They're selling stock to people. More people buy, they get more money. And then, or they can borrow money and, le and it's leverage, considered leverage. Uh, Long-term debt is considered anything over one year. Short-term anything less than one year. And it's often the long-term debt that we look at if you're going to consider a company to invest in. Now, investment growth will need sales growth, good earnings growth, good management. What are the, what are the people in charge doing with that money that they get? Are they just letting it sit there? Are they giving you a dividend? Or are they buying different companies? Or are they improving their products? And then that company should be have their debt control? Do they have a good cash flow that you can know that you know that they can pay their debt? Now, with all these factors, you could can expect an eventual increase in share price. That means your investment grows. Now, do you have any questions? I'm going to start the video now. Does anybody have any questions? I don't see any questions in the chat, um, uh, but if you want to unmute yourself, it looks like. Okay. Go, uh, Grania, will you have a question? Yeah. Oh, hello? Yes. All right. Okay. I'm just going to start my video, um, I think. Um, yeah. I, I just wanted to know, um, so how do we know? Uh, like where do we find out the information about what the company is actually doing with their investments? Just regarding your last slide. I will yeah. have had those answers with you in the following slides. I'll show you where to get it. Is that, okay. Does that answer you? Okay. Okay. So we'll go okay. on from here. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a I'm very good jumping. question. Very good question. Uh, I'm not sure if I can keep going. Wait a minute. Uh, I think my recording is stuck. Hmm. Okay. I'm not able to move my slides. Uh oh, here we go. We're back up again. We're in business again. Okay. So, what we need to know is what does the company do? How long has the company been in business? Are the sales and profits growing? If so, by how much? What causes the growth? The size of the company, we've covered that, um, but where to find that is important. Any competition, like uh, MasterCard would be in competition with Visa and you might want to compare them, the two of those. Any dividends, that's important. Um, dividend growth is important, uh, meaning every year, do they raise their dividend a little? Or, but what do they do um, to get that dividend? Are they, do they take out a lot of loans to pay your de dividend or, or not? Uh, that's the question. How much debt do they have? And then, um, after all that, you need to look at a, paying a fair price for the stock. Okay, now the library has a tremendous service, a free service to look at value line survey reports and we'll go over, um, we'll, I'll explain what they are in a minute. You can um, go to Morningstar reports 
uh, to find out about a company. Uh, bet, there are better, in, they, better investing magazines are a subscription at the library, and they're very good for the layperson who doesn't know an awful lot about investing. And it gets you is a good start. There are so many books and magazines on investment at the library. And then we'll talk a little bit about um, what you can get online, not necessarily from the library, but you know everybody can get this information um, online and it's called the Edgar uh, Papers. Now, where are we going? No, I lost you. Okay, i tell you what happened there. Just have to get them out because I didn't ask to be. Whoops. Okay. I'm launching the meeting. Um, I need help here. We're still seeing yeah. your screen, Hannah. We're still seeing the slides. So are you? Yeah, that's good. Um, I don't know why. I'm going to, I'm going to try a new share. Um, I don't know why it got out of um, Edgar. It went into Edgar. Oh, okay. So, it. Yeah, you've probably got still got the PowerPoint down at the bottom if you. Okay. We're well, still seeing your PowerPoint presentation. Well, um, okay. Uh, the making of an American capitalist, and this is about Warren Buffett, and it's it's a very interesting um, story about him and his life, uh, and he's a tremendous reader. Um, and it comes in all sorts of forms and at the library. Um, all About Stocks is an easily read book. And uh, All About Investing is also, I've read that one. Investing for Dummies is very good. And as I mentioned, the Better Investing magazine is a su subscription from the library. Now, this is a book that I've just come up with. Uh, from another webinar, and I, you can get it from the library, but Peter Lynch, John Tem Templeton, and Warren Buffett are the authors of that, and it's supposed to, it, it got very good ratings. Uh, value Line, we're going to talk about that for a while, and you get lots of information from Value Line. It's published weekly, there's about 1,700 uh, uh, companies that are covered in this. It's grouped by industry, um, 100 industries and 10 sectors, and each company uh, is updated every 13 weeks. And all sorts of important news come, and I'm going to show you um, the value line investment survey and, and what it looks like and uh, about what you can use from it. Um, uh, later on, um, Lauren is going to show you how you can access all of this information. Uh, so this is the name of the company, and this is the stock exchange, and this is the ticker symbol. And this is the sheet when you look at it. It's got all sorts of interesting things. It's got some ratings there. Um, down here, whoops, I've got to move this character a little bit. I can't move it. Okay, ratings down below. Um, and where else? Come on. Oh, there's a price chart here. You'll see how the price, this is Walmart. And the, I believe this is uh, 2000, uh, goes up to 2004. Uh, but it, this is only an example. Um, here's a price chart, and you can see how the price has gone up in Walmart over the years, this statistical array of annual data. And I'm going to show you more of what you can get out of this area in the next slide. Uh, the quarterly data tells you um, what the dividends are and uh, what the earnings are for each quarter. And then uh, the forecasts of what they think is going to happen to the price and um, all of this data in uh, up to four or five years ahead, their expectations of growth. Down here are the analysts' comments and each 
uh, company has only one analyst. So you only have one person's point of view, but this is an important point of view. And this is very helpful if you're looking at a company to invest in. Okay, this is more detail. See, uh, this, is, um, this is MasterCard. Um, let me see, here are the revenues. You see how the revenues have increased every year? Except they went down 2020, that's COVID. Now it's getting better again. And now this is what they expect in 2022. So th this looks like a consistent growth in revenues except for the COVID year. Then this shows you the net profit. You see that it's pretty consistent growth. And here again, in 2020, they had problems and uh, that's very understandable, but they seem to be recovering. So that's a really good sign. And here is the income tax bracket. See, they, they started off with a big income tax bracket that uh, now it's leveled off. And then you have all sorts of other information down there. It will tell you how many shares the company, um, the common shares outstanding. And now um, Lauren will demonstrate how you can get to that data. Lauren, are you there? <laughs> I am here. I'm going to. Uh... So I'll stop share. Okay. Now, I'm hoping everyone can see the library's homepage. Are you seeing that? Can you see that, Hannah, the library's homepage? I can see that. Great. I okay. See I'm seeing some thumbs up. Okay, great. So I'm going to show you um, uh, how to get to Value Line through our Research and Learn um, portion of the website. But I also want to point out that we have the search box here. If you simply type in Value Line as two words and click search, it'll be the first result as well. But um, it lives under Research and Learn. And I'm doing the library thing because I want you to notice all the other resources that we have that you might want to check out later. So I've clicked Research and Learn. And then I'm going to click on See All Resources. And this gives a list of all of the different um, databases and learning tools that the library um, has. And you have access to all of these for free with your library card. Um, because I am in the library, it's not going to ask me for my library card and birth date, but from home, um, it will ask you for that. So I'm, these are just an alphabetical order. So I'm trying not to make you too dizzy. Um, I'm going to click on Value Line Investment Survey and then log into this resource. And from home, this would ask you for your library card number and your PIN, which is your birth date. Um, so this is um, a value line here. And I'm going to go ahead and put in a company. Um, uh, you, can, you can search by company name, or if you already know the, the uh, symbol, the ticker symbol, you can put that in. So we were looking at Google earlier. Um, so I'm going to select that. And then to get to that report that Hannah was showing us um, for Walmart and then for uh, MasterCard, I believe right here, it's kind of hidden, but it says PDF reports. That's where you get all of that good information. And it has the link to the most recent one at the top. So you can click on that. And also it allows you to, to make it bigger because the, the numbers are very, very tiny. Um, so again, this is some of the, the um, rankings that she was talking about here. I don't know if you want to say anything about that, Hannah. Well, uh, safety is important. It often relates to um, the financial. Um, timeliness is often their expectations for this reporter uh, of what will happen in this coming year. Will the price go up? And technical is more um, what is going to happen in the future course, people don't know as much. But you can see the um, lines, the vertical lines in the chart above show you the uh, high and the lows of the price. And then um, every down day. Here, and down here are some of those other items you're looking at earlier, the, the revenues um, uh, and other um, shares outstanding and other things are here. And then the, the summary um, and the ratings down here. 
of course, we're looking at a very expensive stock, as Hannah pointed out to us earlier, but um, but then it, it has the, the rankings down there. And so um, someone's asking, uh, what is a good percentage growth to look for, Hannah? And oh, is, we'll be, I'll be covering that okay. soon. Okay, and is one a good number for safety? Uh, one is a very good number. One is good on all of those. Okay. I mean, if you if you see a one, okay. and you can see the um, uh, what they're predicting in in the future, twenty four in two thousand and twenty four twenty six, it gives you an idea. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. There's all sorts of disasters will happen, might happen. Come, you know, we'll have a war. Everything will go down. Nobody's interested in Google anymore. Um, uh, you just can't tell, but this is the chance you take. But some, the uh, Google is certainly, this is the Google, there are two Googles. There's a Google L and a Google G-O-O-G. -O -O -G. Mm -hmm. um, there's a difference between the two. So um, I don't know what we, we've got alphabet. It's probably okay, but I, I thought it was a G-O-O-O-G-L. Yes. But I this don't is know. G-O-O-G, we can go back and look. Um, yeah. Look at the G-O-G-L. -G yeah, there's that one. Yeah, it's a yeah. One. Although for that one, it doesn't let me look at the PDF report. I'm not sure. Okay. Not sure okay. Then um, there's a distinction between those two stocks. When they split, they split into um, Google L and G-O-O-G. Uh, -O -O and one is uh, where you still have voting rights and the other one you won't have voting rights. So okay. that's that's something you do, would have to look at. Okay. Anything else you want me to show? Well, you can show MasterCard. That's okay. not as complicated. <laughs> okay, sure. All right. So there's, I put an MA for MasterCard and it, or started to type MasterCard and it came right up there. So I just selected it. Um, and then here is the PDF report again. And I'll select the most recent one. And then I'll zoom in for my old eyes. <laughs> yeah, didn't know you could do that. Good. Um, but this uh, you'll see over here, it'll tell you all about the company and um, okay. it, it's, it's priced pretty high, just like Google is at the moment. But the interesting thing about these um, uh, reports, they're only given every three, three months. They're quarterly reports, and they're given by the same person, but they do change every three months depending on what's going on in the company. But it, it, it's, uh, it's still very useful. But in, in, if you've just read a report, I don't know which one, what, what is the time for this report? It says at the bottom, it gives you a date. Yeah, November the 5th. So you would have to wait another three months before another report comes out. Yeah, very good. Okay, I'll stop my share now. Okay. And I will share screen. Lauren, what did you type in to get that screen? Sure, so it, I just went to um, the library's yeah. website. Uh, Sorry. Um, www.dbrl.org is the library's website. It's not making it a hyper. All right, okay, I did that, and you went. You and went, I went to, to Mastercard. I went to Research and Learn, the big right. green Research and Learn. And you typed in company name. We have to. Right? Get, we have to get to the value. We have to get the value line um, resource right. first. Right. Okay. So I'm I, on that. So I clicked but See I, All Resources and went to Value Line. Right. Oh, Value Line. Okay. Yes. Right. And I'm on value line. So how did you get that chart? So I, yeah. you have to, you have to, um, when you, once you log into here, I mean, let me share my screen again really quickly and I'll go through the process again real quick so okay. people can see yeah. it. Yeah. That might be the easiest thing to do. Okay. I cut this Thank down. you. Sure. Am I in the way? No, you're fine. Okay, good. Okay. Oops. All right. So here is the homepage again. And actually, so so we're just at dbrl.org. That's the, the web address up there in the address bar. Um, so the easiest way to get there, honestly, is if in the search box, just type value line. 
and it's the first result here. So if you click on that at home, it's going to ask you for your library card number. Um, it starts with 21269, ask for your library card number and your birth date. Um, and then, then you put in the, the company you're searching for up here. So that's where I typed master, started to type MasterCard and it, it came up there. And the instructions are in at the bottom of your glossary. Thank too. you, yes, they are in the bottom of the handout. And so then you get to the PDF report. So the, so the easy way is just to start at the library's homepage, dbrl.org, type in value line, choose that first, that first search item, um, and, then, and then go from there with your library card. All right, Hannah, back to you. Okay, I think so. Right, where am I going? Oh my, oh, demonstration break, okay, uh, share screen. Okay, here we go. Um, now, I hope I can move forward. No, I can't move forward. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. It always takes a minute. Oh, yeah, right they, yeah, it, 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 yeah, slow starter. Here, uh, my favorite guy is here, Warren Buffett. Um, I read the book uh, about him, and his uh, wife, Susie, his first wife, Susie, said that he was a happy camper. All you had to do is give him a room, give him a chair and, and some light and uh, some of these forms to look at, and he's a, the happiest camper. He's such a good reader. And I dare not uh, put my pointer on, uh, on that website because um, it'll just trigger the web website. Uh, but all companies that are foreign or domestic are required to file registration statements, periodic reports, and any other forms electronically through um, EDGAR. And anybody can access them and download this information for free. Um, the annual reports are called the 10K reports, and quarterly reports are called 10Q reports. And these are distinct from the printed, um, often very glossy annual reports that the you will sh uh, be, that will be sent to the shareholders. It's lots of valuable information on the financial operation and what's going on in the company is contained in that. But there's a lot of reading in it, and it, it's very comprehensive. And, and uh, um, I wrote at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. Security and Exchange Commission, and then uh, EDCA stands for Electronic Data Gathering Guide <laughs> Analysis and Retrieval System. So there you, ha there you have it. There's... Okay, now we'll go down to the next slide. I don't know why I'm having problems. Um, I'm having problems. There we go. Let me be sure that I haven't. Uh, now, one of the important statements or information you can get to make up this statement is called the uh, income statement. And here's a very simple income statement for one company where the net sales are on top, the expenses are below, the, uh, that, and you take that away and you have the pre-tax profit, take away the taxes, you have the net income divided by the the number of shares and you have the earnings per share, okay? Now this information can be represented in a graphic form um, and you, maybe you go into a stockbroker uh, web website and you'll see uh, bar graphs. And there, you know, this is, this is an income statement. I'm not sure uh, what company this is from, but this is a very consistent growth of income, which is a very good sign. And here you can also uh, plot graphs uh, with the same information and you'd look for consistent increases. Now, I just want to explain better investing before I show you some of these other graphs. Um, it's a company that was started in 1951 or not a company, it's an organization. Uh, started in 1951, and the goal is public education on st stock investing. And it's implemented with the use of volunteer trained uh, ed educators, and uh, you pay for membership, but 
you have a lot, you get a lot with your membership. Um, you get a magazine every month. There are lots of webinars on investing there. Um, you'll have one, I read one, uh, listened to one recently on um, when you should sell, when you should buy, and when you should just trim. And um, it, it gave all the reasons of what you needed to consider when you make a decision like that. There's lots of software that facilitates the stock analysis available and Morningstar data is used for the graphing. So here, what to look for in the graphs. The ideal is, and this is, they use graphs that are semi-logarithmic so that you get the compounded effect of the sales. And this is the sales you look for, you look for the profit and you look for the earnings per share. And this is a, an actual company. And you can see how with this kind of structure, you are going to get, uh, your price is going to change and go up. Now there's a low price for the year and there's a high price for every year. And you'd be surprised at what the range is, but you look for something that's up straight and parallel. Um, here's an example. I th think this is from United Health, and this goes up to 2018, and I presented it to the stock group at one stage. And this is not, this is pretty good, solid, consistent sales, and this is good profit. And then for some reason, they had a little dip there, and you can read up and find out why they had a dip there. And you can see the sales also went up. Uh, now this is a graph that has the years at the bottom, the horizontal line at the bottom, and this is the growth um, compounded. Okay, we'll go down a bit. And here is, there's other data that's available. And I do believe this is for United Health, and this was only done in 2018. Whether they've done well since, I don't know. Um, now, this is the long term debt, the debt over a year. And this is the cash flow, and it looks pretty good. And this is interesting. The dividend has been increased every year. And in particular, it's good to look for the last five years. Um, and here's the net income. And this is the outstanding shares. And this gives you an idea of whether they're buying back shares or are they selling more shares. So that's important data. Um, this is Amer and UE, and this is just to show you. Now, what I've shown you are growth stocks. That's where the sales increase and everything's increasing. Now, some people prefer to buy income stocks where there's less growth and there's a more concentration on dividends. Uh, I don't know about that here, but anyhow, here's a so this is what they're graphing would look like. And it depends, there are some good uh, income stocks around. Stock clubs. Um, I belong to a stock club, it's a women's stock club. We have monthly, monthly meetings. Um, some stock clubs only meet every three months or whenever, I don't know, you don't have to meet every month. But uh, we usually pay each month, and what we uh, pay is um, anything between $25 and $100. Um, you can put in what you like. Now, when I first belonged to the stock club, there were 25 women in the group, and I mean, they, it was very hard to make up your mind. And, but you can go home and think about the stocks that they've presented and do your own um, homework and make your own judgment. And many times I've done just that. Uh, in fact, I can later on tell you a story about O'Reilly 
you know, I presented the stock, nobody was interested. Somebody said, oh, they work for O'Reilly. <laughs> and um, I went home and I decided I'd buy, I'd buy the stock because I was convinced it was a good growth stock at that time. Um, you share ideas with other people, you review stocks, everybody is responsible for one stock and watching that one stock. And if we have a stock that we think we might buy, we might wait a month and then um, put it on what's called a pounce list. And we're also trying to include an educational component into each meeting to make things interesting. Um, and we have social activities and we build friendships. It's, it's, a, it's a nice way to meet people. And it really does help you learn before you leap. Uh, so what you're looking for if you want to invest, a good investment is a growth stock. Uh, look for a high quality growth stock. Um, uh, high quality, they should have good management, consistent management. Maybe they've been there for a while. They have lots of um, uh, background, the people who manage the company. Um, they keep on maintaining and improving their profit margin and um, they invest their assets effectively. Um, for growth, they need consistent sales growth, consistent earnings growth, and it's good that if they have a five-year track uh, record of consistent growth, um, maybe it's not best to go into an initial public offering that is just entered the market, sometimes the very high price, have a very high PE, maybe let them settle down for about five years before you consider investing in them. Now, let's consider growth comparing with previous years, simple growth versus compound growth. Um, simple growth, if you started off with $100,000 um, and it's, you're looking for a growth of 10%, um, now a simple growth would be this. After 10 years, after, excuse me, after five years, the difference would be 11,000. Now, if this growth was 15%, the difference would be 26,000. Now, realistic goals for a company size. Somebody asked about that. If they're a very small company, it's often a little bit of a risk, very volatile, uh, risky in a downturn. Um, this is where Google started off. Um, uh, I'm sure uh, Facebook started off this way. Um, and people were excited about the idea. Um, and I'll tell you, if we have time, I'll tell you about Ticketmaster. I was excited about the idea and it was just introduced as an IPO when I bought it and what happened to me. Um, if it's a medium sized company, you might expend, expect seven, seven to 12% growth. If it's a large size company, it's very hard for the larger the company, it's hard for them to have a, a high percentage increase unless they um, diversify or create new ideas or something like that. Google's probably something like that. Uh, they're more resistant to in a downturn and it takes longer for them to double, of course. Now, this is what uh, happens here. There's the this is what probably happened to Google and Facebook and probably at Walmart. Uh, they have a speculation beginning here and then they end up in exp explosive uh, growth, which is the best uh, investment opportunity. And then when they get too big, they, you might, they might uh, face stabilization where nothing really happens and it's no longer a great investment or may be a decline, um, uh, new, uh, like cars, eventually the regular car is going to go into a decline, but this is 
many, many years ahead, maybe we will have only battery uh, run cars. Now, what affects the price of the stock? Rumors, analysts reports, earnings reports. If the earnings reports comes out with, sometimes there are earning expectations come out first. And then if the expectations do not match what actually happens, the actual report, um, it's a surprise, but sometimes it's a surprise is something that's, oh, it's better than what we expected. A disappointment is a little bit less. Um, this shouldn't make a lot of difference unless it's for a good reason, um, like COVID suddenly happened. Uh, everything went down. Or if uh, suddenly uh, the pension fund decided to make a big trade of this particular stock, it would make it because of the size of the trade, um, it will affect the price of that stock. Disasters like COVID was a disaster for so many people, so many companies political change of that upheaval. I come from Australia and I've been here for 50 years. So I'm an American citizen now, but I still hear what's happening in Australia. And that, it sounds like they're having a fight with China about um, Taiwan and who knows what will, will happen to the stock market then. Now, some people say don't, every company at some stage is, um, being sued. In fact, my husband says, what's the, what's the um, most popular name in the United States for a girl? And he said, and I said, I don't know. He said, Sue. So um, it is very popular for a company to be sued. And um, it may only be temporary. So don't always take this very seriously. Okay, now learning from mistakes and others, you can't live long enough to make them all yourself. And let me tell you just a few of mine. Okay, it was in 2010, I knew nothing about um, investing and my daughter showed me how to open up an account with a discount broker. And my fir very first investment was, um, Ticketmaster, and this is the symbol. And I thought it was a wonderful idea, and I didn't know what an IPO was, so I bought some. And then I watched it just about every day, and I was disappointed. And I, I it was like a, I was like a yo-yo. Um, then it started to merge with uh, Live Nation Entertainment in 2010. And um, I was told that they would stop trading uh, ticket, Ticketmaster. And so I got frightened and sold it all. Now, whether I consider this a mistake, because I, the mistake was I didn't know what I was doing, but whether I would have gotten, um, probably would have been given shares of this other company, but whether I would have been pleased with the share, I don't know. I. I think it's still trading on the stock market and it's not very high at the moment. So I, my suspicion is that I probably made a mistake but did the right thing. Now, O'Reilly is interesting. Now, uh, you've seen O'Reilly, it's an auto supply company and it provides services as well. Well, I had joined a stock club, I started to read, and then I read the book called uh, Beating the Street by Peter Lynch. And he said in that book, look around you, look what's increasing, look what's going on. Well, I saw one store that was called O'Reilly. And a couple of weeks later, I saw another store that was set up in Columbia called O'Reilly. Then I'd go down to the Ozarks. There was another store of O'Reilly, read up about it. And it was uh, going through the States and I, uh, and then it was going out of state and I bought some for $11. Then 
I saw, I've been told to buy low, sell, sell high, and it had doubled at 22. So I sold half of it at 22 and kept the next half. And then I thought, oh, it reached 44. And I thought I was so pleased with myself. It was 44. This was going back 2010, 2012, or something like that. Umpteen years later, there it was in. Um, less than 6,000 stores, 22,000, 22 in Mexico, and the price of O'Reilly is uh, just under $600 a share. So, so my final words are, invest with the money that you have that's extra beyond, beyond your needs. Consider taking advantage of the employee employer retirement sponsored contributions and having chosen a company for your investment you still need to consider what you're willing to pay no matter how good the company if the stock is overpriced it's not a good investment you will notice in some of these um, reports it'll tell you what especially if you uh, are linked up with the discount broker, they will tell you what the high and the low were for the year. And you'd be surprised at uh, what the range is and that you might have been able to buy it for a much lower price had you waited a little or been patient enough to think at that time. So thank you.